Well, I think the key thing in terms of building the Midlands Powerhouse is the Devo deal that we're attempting to do with government at the moment and our submission went in to government yesterday. And obviously what we're trying to do is build on the models that we've seen around Manchester and London, where we're essentially making an offer to government in terms of what we can achieve for UK PLC in terms of greater outputs, in terms of the economy, housing, and all of the quality of life issues. But we need government to cooperate in providing the devolution of powers down to a local level. Because at the moment, a lot of government programmes and policies are not suitable for what the challenges that we face in the West Midlands. So we need to have the devolution of those powers and those funding streams so that we can tailor our programmes and we can deliver extra over and above what we're doing at the moment. HS2 will have a massive and already is having a massive impact on the housing market. The ability for people to get from Birmingham to London in 45 minutes is already having an impact. We're already seeing people buying into the area. We're already seeing people moving, particularly young professionals, from London to Birmingham because of affordability. Properties are far more affordable in Birmingham at the moment. Of course, that may change as HS2 gets closer. And what we do expect to see is that the arrival of HS2 and the, the fact that HS2 is coming along will stimulate the apartment market in Birmingham. We're already seeing signs of that in terms of higher levels of applications, more schemes coming out of the ground. So we think the economic benefits of HS2 will be very significant, not just for Birmingham and the West Midlands, but also in terms of the housing offer in Birmingham, both within the city centre and those sites that are close to the new station at Curzon Street, but there'll be a ripple effect further out to the suburbs as well. Because once people have actually moved to Birmingham, as young professionals, we think they'll want to stay in the city and in due course move out to the suburbs, so there will be a bigger impact. If, it's a, if they're authorities like Birmingham, we have a constrained amount of land, so we're short of land in the city. We think that including our green belt extension, we'll be able to accommodate around about 51,000 new homes. But the reality is that we need 89,000 new homes. So the only way that growth will be accommodated is by a lot of the local authorities. Now, obviously, at the moment, the way that we're dealing with that is through the duty to cooperate. But again, this fits into the West Midlands Combined Authority deal. And if the West Midlands Combined Authority deal delivers on what we, hope, what we want it to, then we will have a regional approach to housing demand and supply in the West Midlands Combined Authority area. And that's what we really need. In terms of what councils can do to spur on brownfield development, I really think this, this comes down to flexibility in the way that sometimes planning policies are applied. When we're talking about brownfield and all of the sites that I'm building out in Birmingham are brownfield, there's quite a, there's quite a spectrum in terms of the site conditions. Particularly in Birmingham, we have site conditions on some of our brownfield sites that are extremely challenging and we need local authorities to be more flexible around their requirements in terms of SIL, Section 106, public open space contributions, all of those issues for those more challenging sites. But essentially, it does come down to the viability of individual sites. Just because it's brownfield doesn't mean it's not a viable site. And it's that constructive dialogue, that constructive tension between the developer and the planning authority that needs to broker a solution. That's more easily achieved in an authority like Birmingham, where there is a pro-growth agenda. I think there are two main qualities that we look for in development partners. One is that we look for a partner who's willing to take a proportionate share of risk because we appreciate that development of housing is always a risky business. There are commercial risks involved. We've pioneered a risk sharing model where we as the local authority share risk with private sector developers in bringing forward homes for sale. And we think it's important that the private sector recognises the fact that, that we're taking a risk as well. The second one, which is equally important, is around quality. Because one of the things we're very keen to do as the council is to drive up the quality of the built environment. So we're very keen to see private developers coming forward with high quality developments because we want the schemes that they build to be there for 50, 100 or even more years. So it's very important to us that they achieve that design quality and use high quality materials.